Okay, this is part two of the Adobe Camera Raw tutorials and as promised I'm going to talk about the set of tools we've got up here in the toolbar. Uh, first of all you'll notice that this time I've got more than one picture open and so we get this little side panel here which shows us all the pictures we've got open. It is possible if we want to to edit all at once by going select all and uh, then we can literally whatever we do in the panel will will uh, affect all the pictures in the same way. But in this particular instance I want to uh, just concentrate on one at a time. Now the first uh, little knob, well, well let's deal with obviously the magnifying glass which is much the same as you always get in all these programs. If I press the Alt key then it changes to a minus and we can zoom out. If I right click then I can get various different levels of zoom and everybody's favorite fit in view. That's the one you want really. Okay the next one is the hand which I have to zoom in a little bit to get the any value out of the hand but then I can whiz the picture around that's zoomed in a little bit too much isn't it right uh, then I can whiz the picture around now you can also without selecting the hand you can get the hand by pressing the space bar on your keyboard and then you can move with the hand and then when you release the space bar it goes back to the tool that you had selected before so just right click and go back to fit in view so we can see the whole picture. Uh, moving along the next little one here is the white balance tool as you can see with the tool tip there. This enables you to pick a white spot in the picture and um, it will turn that, that pixel that you pointed at to white and the rest of the picture will be balanced accordingly. Now you've got to go around the picture and find something which ought to be white. Now I've found a spot back here on this building which actually puts the picture more or less where I want it. So it's quite a difficult tool to use unless you know that something is absolutely supposed to be white or grey. It works equally well with grey or black so any neutral colour, neutral tone uh, will work but of course it's very difficult to say in that kind of lighting in this particular sunny lighting whether something was really white or not uh, the fact that it was painted white doesn't mean a thing so really you've got to get in the ballpark if you if you're fiddling around with these uh, color sliders over here and you getting just getting nowhere then this little white balance tool or grey balance tool can get you out of trouble. Uh, where did I find that wonderful pixel? Somewhere around here I think uh, will give me... I worked out previously that this picture balances nicely at about 51, 52 and uh, probably 52,000 Kelvins and about minus one on there. That gives me the sort of warm picture that I, I quite like. Okay, moving along the line, the next thing is the crop tool, which is probably one of the most useful tools in this little section here. Uh, the crop tool obviously crops the picture. And if I then press enter or return, then it will pull the picture into the crop that I've just made. If I go back to the crop tool then it takes me back so I can see my cropping. Now that's easy enough but right click on this tool and you've got all kinds of lovely options. Normal gives you uh, a six point, uh, well sorry eight points in, altogether uh, which then enables you to be able to move it in any way whatsoever. Or the thing which I find more useful is to restrict it to a particular ratio. Two to three is what my camera shoots so I quite like to keep my pictures two to three. Three to four might be what your camera shoots then you can balance the pictures up nicely. The reason I like to keep pictures in ratio is so that they go together quite well because uh, I'm usually editing 
20, 30 pictures at a time rather than just one. Uh, the other thing you can do with this in the custom uh, section here, you've got a choice of ratio, which is what we've just been doing. You've got pixels, inches and centimeters. So I find that when I'm making pictures for, say, Facebook or the web, it's nice to be able to dial in a specific number of pixels, like 1200 by 800 is what I normally set them for, for Facebook. If I'm making a Facebook album, then Facebook will crop them down afterwards. But that gives me um, a size that I can easily upload without uh, overloading the, um, the whole system. Now, having set that, that custom to 1200 by 800 pixels, this will, if I've got a whole bunch of pictures, it will make all the pictures 1200 by 800, providing I change it to 1200 by 800. And even if it, in, and in this case, we've got an upright picture, but it'll make it 800 by 1200. It's intelligent enough to know the difference between the two. If I pull it like that, then it will change to a view picture. Uh, but obviously with this one I want an upright picture. And so once again if I wanted to make that into an upright picture it will now be 800 by 1200. Uh, so it does both ways. Okay so that just about covers this tool. Clear crop does what it says you know, um, and then we can start again with a different kind of crop. I think that's about all there is to know about this. We've got different ratios, obviously, for different uh, uses. Normal, we've discussed. We've got the pixels and centimeters. If you set it to centimeters, then um, it will depend on on what your re uh, resolution is set to. But if you open it in Photoshop, having set a particular number of centimeters, then that's the size it will print at. Right, moving on, moving on. Right, the next little tool, which I think is rather splendid, uh, I'll move on to another picture here and I'll clear the crop so you can see what happens here. Whoops, no I won't. I have to go back to the crop tool for that. Clear crop takes me back to the entire picture as shot. Now, if I want to, uh, something I didn't show you actually, on the crop tool, if I want to tilt my crop, then I can do so just by moving my cursor outside of the picture, get those two little bent arrows, and then I can tilt my crop in any way that I want. But this tool here, uh, one minute, clear crop first. Uh, this tool here enables you to be able to follow a line like the line of the edge of this sandpit and it automatically tilts the crop for you. Now if I pull this in you'll see that that wasn't a very useful thing to do. It lines up with the sandpit nicely but the uprights of the picture are completely out. So a better alternative would be to follow down one of the uprights, especially an upright near the center of the picture, like so. Then when I pull my picture in, it will look a little bit more as though I've actually lined it up properly. Uh, I'll have to show a little bit of sand to see what she's jumping into. Uh, it now lines up with the shelter, the edge of the shelter there. And if I click enter, that will uh, zoom in and also tilt it. Now the sandpit actually looks level, you see, um, and the uprights look level too, so that's more or less what I want. Okay, so that covers cropping, and we've covered the grey point or the white point. This next little tool here does red eye beautifully, automatically, superbly. 
Uh, I've got a picture here which I try to avoid taking in the first place but every now and again you have to use your flash on the camera and you get this kind of thing. Now the red eye tool works brilliantly if you you must uh, cover the whole eye don't don't try and just get into the spot do the whole eye and give it a bit of space around it and the tool will find the red bit and uh, it will magically change it to black so at the moment we have four lovely little squares there uh, if I change back to another tool then you'll see that the eyes have been beautifully uh, blackened up and the highlights are still there the pupils have gone a little bit darker than they were but not completely black um, so it it does everything you could possibly want well, I think so anyway okay moving along this one is the just the preferences screen for various uh, little things uh, that you probably never need to know and in the Photoshop version of um, this camera raw you would get a, a much larger one because there are many more preferences that you can change yes one thing I forgot to say at the beginning of the video this particular version of camera raw comes with elements so everybody no matter which version of camera raw they've got will have these tools if you have the full fat Photoshop version you will have more tools uh, that we can talk about at a later date but I wanted to make this one with the elements version so that everybody who's got any kind of version of Photoshop will be able to relate to these tools and be able to use them the little curly things are just obviously the same as you get in any other program where you can turn the picture around and keep turning it and spinning it any way you want and the dustbin will mark your picture for deletion uh, as you can see over here it's got a little um, red cross in it now so were I to close this program with that red cross still there it will delete that photo uh, image will be moved to trash and if you decide you don't want it to move to trash just click on the bin again and it will disappear so that covers all the tools Next time we'll talk about how to get your picture in and out of Adobe Camera Raw in the best possible way. Mm -hmm.